to share my, my personal story. So four years ago, <coughs> I didn't look anything like this. I looked more like this. Whatever. Cool. Huh? <laughs> anyway. Maybe we can put you up on stage next to you. <laughs> exactly. He's trying to make I grew up in California in a very traditional Jewish family. Our Judaism was so special that we went to shul twice a year on Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. And uh, on Yom Kippur we tried to fast and things like that. And on Hanukkah we ate latkes. But Judaism wasn't so interesting to me. I wasn't so involved, I wasn't so interested. On the other hand, Baruch Hashem, I was blessed with a lot of Atzlacha. Academically, my school had 5,000 students, and I was top 50 academically in my, in my public high school. And I was very successful in tests and AP classes and all these various things, as well as I, I was very involved in sports. From the time I was 14, I got very serious about tennis. I used to play tennis, and when I was 16 years old, I won the Los Angeles City Championships. I became the best tennis player in Los Angeles. This is the uh, picture from when I won the uh, LA City Championships. So, and, uh, and because of that, because of that came a lot of very special things. I got scholarships from colleges, for example, UCLA, and the other colleges, I mentioned UCLA because that's the top tennis college. And everything was going very well. But my parents were very worried that I wasn't so involved in Yiddishkeit and I didn't like Yiddishkeit. So they sent me to a summer camp, they sent me to a summer camp called Sitim. They sent me to this camp thinking that I would just at least start liking Judaism. They didn't realize what they're getting into. But uh, they sent me to a camp that I should start liking Judaism. And I went on Sitim and it changed my life. And I just want to explain why very quickly. One reason is because before that, I didn't think Judaism was possible for me. I didn't think Judaism was something you connect to. I didn't know Hebrew. I didn't know Olive Bays. I didn't know anything. When I came to Sitim, they taught me what Judaism is really about, that you can pray in English, and Hashem likes when you pray in English, and it's special, and every Yid is special, and every Yid is a Shliach, like Elder, everyone's having here. Every Yid is a Shliach. Everyone's important. This is one thing that I never felt before. I never felt that I, was, I did something that mattered. Another thing is that I made real friends. Before I had friends because of tennis and because you're popular and because of this and that. On seat I didn't tell anybody anything. I made real friendships. Friendships that last until this day. And I want to say, I want to bring out, I want to say one story that seating absolutely changed my life. When I first came home and started becoming religious, I didn't know much. I knew you can't use your phone on Shabbat. I knew you can wear a yarmulke and sit and fill it. But... My parents were not so happy with me. You can imagine, I come, my yeah, is a desa, I'm saying my parents come from, not from uh, desa, mama, whatever. They come from, they come from uh, a Russian house. I come from a Russian household. When a child becomes religious, it's like bad almost. And my parents were upset. And even more than that, my grandparents, my grandparents were even more upset. So much so that my grandfather told me he never wants to speak to me for the rest of my life. And for me, as a 16-year-old, to hear that, that my grandfather never wants to speak to me, is painful. I was raised by him, I grew up by him, he always went to my tennis matches, I was very close to him, and suddenly he tells me, he never wants, suddenly he tells me that he never wants to speak to me for the rest of my life, it was something that I couldn't handle. So I, did, I used to cry a lot, it was very hard. A few months after that, I went on the seat in Shabbaton. They have a big Shabbaton in Crown Heights. With, with all of the people and all the 2,000 teenagers in, in Crown Heights having an amazing time. And one of the things, we went to the Ohel. We went to the Rebbe Zayel, and they told me, whatever you write to the Rebbe gets answered. Sounds great. Whatever you write to the Rebbe gets answered. So I wrote everything. Whatever gets answered, I write everything. So I wrote everything, and I took a resolution that I'm going to start keeping kosher. And I, come, I came home and told my parents I'm not eating your food anymore, <laughs> which, uh, which didn't really work out as well as I pictured it. But uh, anyways, I, uh, so I wrote, I wrote a lot of things, and one of the things I wrote about was my grandfather. That Not that we should be close, but we should at least speak to have a normal relationship. I want to speak to him. And a few months went by, nothing changed. And I was on, a, I was on vacation in Hawaii, and on the way back, I was sitting in the airport, I was a little bored, 
So I decided I'm going to make a, a cheshbon, all of the things I wrote to the Rebbe, if they got answered or not. So I was going through the list and checking off each one. Everything I wrote to the Rebbe got answered. Every single thing except one. This thing with my grandfather. For some reason, he still didn't want to speak to me. He didn't want to have to do with me. He didn't want anything. He didn't want to hear about me. And I'm, I'm sitting there thinking, this is a broken system. They lied to me. They told me the Rebbe answered everything. I wrote something, I thought I wrote with the Emmas, and the Rebbe didn't answer me. So what's going on with me? And I was sitting there thinking, how could this happen? And two minutes later, I get a phone call from my grandfather. And my grandfather tells me that I want to apologize for everything I've done to you the last 10 months of your life. And I want you to know that when you come back, I want, I want to rebuild, I want to restart, I want to start speaking again, I want to recuperate. And what happened is when I came back, we started speaking and we got closer and so much so that now my father, who is my grandfather's son, my father became from after me and my sister just recently took a, a chlata to start keeping cashless and my mother also is, uh, my mother is also getting there and my grandfather, my grandfather, first of all we started speaking, besides that every safer I have in yeshiva my grandfather buys for me and on, on Hey Davis my grandfather buys me a set of smart in it. <laughs> but, uh, this is a story I'm tr I want to bring out to bring out a certain point that if it wasn't for Sitin, this wouldn't be possible. If it wasn't for Sitin, the Shabbaton and the Sitin Shluchim, who care so much about every team, because they realize this Nikuda, that a Shliach is here to bring people Chsidis, to bring people Emmets, to bring to bring Emmets Avayi Le'elam to the people. They a Shliach realizes this. And this is what affected me so much that it literally changed my life and the entire life of my family. And because they lifted up one neshama, they lifted up thousands of more neshamas. So the high What's your number? Huh? Tens of thousands. Tens of thousands of neshamas. Hundreds of thousands. Hundreds of thousands. Millions. Millions of neshamas. Right. Tens of thousands.